The next item, we are speaking about the present history. We started by the onset, uh, the cause. And the next item is the character of the complaint. What is the characters of the complaint? What are the characters of the complaint? We can classify them into three items. Number one, data by the word S. By the word S. Is it single or multiple? Is it single? or multiple and these are examples of multiple swellings for example the first one is multiple neurofibromatosis it is an autosomal uh, dominant disease multiple neurofibromatosis and this is an example for multiple multiple lipomatosis multiple lipomata all over the body and the third example is a multiple swellings characterized by the the multiplicity sign which is lymphadenopathy lymphadenopathy is characterized by multiplicity sign and of course there is generalized lymphadenopathy generalized lymphadenopathy or localized into uh, small groups these are characters of the multiple swellings so the swelling is single or multiple number two the relative size by the word s the relative size is it olive size lemon size orange size melon size whatever it is the relative size the second group of the characters of the complaint by the word p p is it primary or recurrent is it primary or recurrent for example there is recurrent goiter recurrent goiter or recurrent hernia is it primary or recurrent is it persistent or intermittent? For example, intermittent swellings like hernia, like pharyngeal diverticulum or pharyngeal pouch, they are intermittent swellings, appear and disappear. It is persistent or intermittent. Is it, is it painful or painless? Is it painful or painless? Is it pulsating or not pulsating? These are P's. And the third item in the character of the swelling what increase and what decrease? For example, the hernia increases by cough and straining and decreases by lying down and patient reducibility, patient reduction. Then we will enter in the etiological questions. Etiological questions. Is it dating since birth? Is it following trauma? For example, like hematoma, for example. Is it dating since birth? Is it following a trauma? Is it associated with symptoms suggestive of inflammation like fever prostration malaise presence of uh, uh, pain localized pain and so on so these are symptoms of inflammation is it neoplastic in nature of course by the symptoms of compression for example a goiter with dysphagia dyspnea hoarseness of voice these are the symptoms of compression is it toxic in nature and we will discuss the symptoms of thyrotoxicosis for example like worm intolerance like weight loss in spite of good appetite like palpitation insomnia sweating and so on so these are toxic symptoms and so on so we will add the etiologic questions etiologic questions and of course we will discuss the symptoms of the same system for example if you are speaking about the breast if there is breast lump, we will ask about breast pain and breast discharge and so and so, same system. And the other systems, we will discuss the GIT symptoms, upper and lower, urinary tract upper and lower. The hematologic system, uh, either uh, symptoms of anemia, symptoms of bleeding tendency, symptoms of leukocytosis, like recurrent infections. The musculoskeletal system, the CNS, symptoms of intracranial compression, increased intracranial tension, symptoms of cranial nerve affection, motor or sensory affection, and, and so and so and so, up to the menstrual history, up to the menstrual history. These are the other systems or what we call system review, system review. The next item in the present history, the drug history, again and again, again. The drug history is very, very important. The drug may be the problem itself, it's caused by the drug, or the drug may be the treatment for this problem. For example, thyrotoxicosis and the patient is receiving thyroxine. It is the cause of the problem. 
or for example a case of thyrotoxicosis and the patient is receiving antithyroid drugs so the pulse is regular and normal rate because the patient is receiving antithyroid drugs so the drug may be the clue for diagnosis drug history and we will complete the items as usual like diabetes mellitus history of diabetes and what is the treatment for this diabetes history of hypertension or cardiac disorder and what's the cause history of endemic disease like bilharziasis and malaria and so and so tb for example and we will ask about the menstrual history if uh, you, you did not ask about the menstrual history and we will ask about the past and family history as usual as usual now we can start giving you models of a history taking for example in a male suffering from an in inguinal hernia we can say uh, uh, starting by the personal history a male patient Muhammad Ibrahim 70 years old farmer from Manzala da Qahlaya, uh, married since 30 years and having offsprings he is a heavy smoker 20 years ago he is complaining of swelling in front of the lower lower abdomen three years ago the condition started by gradual onset and slowly progressive course of a single uh, swelling present in the right side of the lower abdomen of orange size uh, the swelling is primary intermittent painless not pulsating increasing by cough and straining and decreasing by lying down and uh, patient reduction the condition is not following trauma not associated with fever prostration malaise not associated with significant uh, upper gastrointestinal symptoms like so and so and so uh, lower abdominal uh, symptoms like so and so and so not associated with uh, uh, cough hemopsis dyspnea uh, either dyspnea on exertion or dyspnea at rest the condition is associated with urinary urgency and urgency for micturition and frequent micturition uh, uh, baiting since the uh, appearance of the swelling this may be uh, associated with urinary uh, compression symptoms and we will mention symptoms regarding the other systems patient is not diabetic not hypertensive uh, patient is not receiving medications, patient is not uh, suffering from an endemic disease. As regards the past and family history, they are irrelevant. They are irrelevant and we will shift for examination. Now we can summarize that the history taking is an art. It is an art. And the difference between the expert doctor and the junior one is the ability to take a good history. And we can say that sometimes 70 percent of diagnosis can be reached by just history taking and sometimes we can diagnose just by telephone call by telephone call for example when you ask about drug history and to know that the drug is the cause of the problem sometimes we can diagnose by telephone call from the voice it is mixedimitous voice for example and uh, uh, history taking may be the clue for diagnosis and history taking make the priority for the disease it is urgent or emergent or elective complicated or uncomplicated and the items of the history taking again is a personal history the complaint and in the complaint avoid the scientific terms and make it chronological and uh, don't forget the role of seven and never to forget the importance of the onset and course it's very important and in the present history also never forget the character of the swelling is it single or multiple painful or painless primary or persistent and so and so never to forget the multiple swellings never to forget the etiological questions never to forget asking about the same history other uh, same system other systems drug history history of diabetes or hypertension or other endemic uh, diseases never to forget the menstrual history never to forget the past and family history and remember our model of uh, discussion and finally hoping you a much of luck and the best of luck and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh